Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to windows. As somebody that looks off wistfully to the stars, I spend so much time looking out of windows to realise that there are different ones. Windows, not stars, although that is also true. And it just so happens that Britain and America encapsulate these differences better than any textbook could. Do we, is that true? Do we know that? I don't think we know that. In the past on this channel I've talked more broadly about the differences between British and American houses, and in some respects it's those very differences that inform both countries' choice of windows. But before we look at slash through the windows in question, it's worth mentioning an observation that I've had about British versus American windows. While I'm not myself an expert on glass manufacturing, I have noticed that due to the physical limitations imposed by physics, windows can really only open outward and inward or up and down. And really it's just these two questions that divide Britain and America. Because you see, even though neither country adopts the following as a universal rule, homes in the United States are more likely to have windows that open upwardly and close downwardly. Those were bad adverbs bad verbs. Whereas a higher percentage of British people are comfortable pushing their windows out and pulling them in, or vice versa. So what does that look like? Well, let me have a crack at answering that question and shattering a few myths. <laughs> we shouldn't make jokes about breaking windows. When it comes to the United States, the window that I'm going to focus on the most is the hung sash window. All eight of the apartments that I've lived in since moving to the United States in some form or fashion have contained hung sash windows. They're very common, get used to them. But what is a hung sash window? Well, it's usually a double hung window with two sashes in it. Makes sense? No, me neither. It turns out that a sash is an individual window piece. A hung sash window has two of these that move up and down within the window frame. And since these types of windows are particularly common in American homes, what are the advantages and disadvantages of having them? Well, it's said that the installation of modern double hung sash windows is particularly energy efficient because the weather stripping helps insulate the windows during winter. Did I say that right? Done right, they can be pleasing on the eye, particularly if they contrast nicely with the colour of the house. And they're apparently easier to clean, but some of the drawbacks are that they don't provide as good ventilation as windows that open out. Because whether you open the top sash or the bottom, outside air can only pass through about half of the window frame. Which brings us on to something that someone no more expertise than me is going to tell you about. Take it away, Lawrence. Of course, one significant benefit for Americans of having windows that go up and down is that they more easily accommodate two very important things, AC units and those bug screen things. Historically, these two things haven't been so important in Britain, which doesn't experience temperatures on the level of much of the United States, while its mosquitoes aren't really the kind that make your face look like this. And to be fair, neither are American mosquitoes. These ones just didn't like British people. Meanwhile, historians and overzealous glaciers believe that the sash window was first developed not in the United States, but England. While others argue that it might have been of Dutch origin. Either way, it's fair to say that both England and the Netherlands had a lasting influence on the early life of the New World. And given that some of the oldest surviving examples of sash windows can be found on English houses from the 1670s, you'd be right to suggest that sash windows absolutely exist in England today. Being a person who now definitely knows a lot about this stuff, I wouldn't claim otherwise, right? Equally, if you look for them, you will find many other styles of windows right here in the United States. These do include windows that open in and out, or in the case of which windows, common to the state of Vermont, open diagonally up and down. But I'm purposely keeping this video simple because otherwise it would last three hours and you'd want to throw me out of the window. And so in that spirit, let's take a look at how Britain does things. We can't talk about modern British houses without talking about casement windows. Casement windows are elongated sashes that are joined to the inner side of the window frame with hinges. These swing inward or outward like a set of double doors or a pair of cat flaps turned the wrong way or just double doors. On the less common occasion that you do find these windows in America, they're normally opened using a crank. Whereas in some parts of Europe, these windows use projection friction stays and a spanulate locking. I've no idea what any of that meant. The point is, casement windows are now seen as the dominant window style in modern UK homes. But after World War II, another style emerged in Germany that quickly spread across Europe, including Britain. And that style is the tilt and turn window. Try saying that after four whiskies. 
next to a tilt and turn window. So what are tilt and turn windows? Well, they are windows with a hinge mechanism that means they can be opened in one of two ways. Firstly, using the lock handle, you can open them inwardly in a manner similar to a casement window. All right, fine, but the really exciting part is that it also has a bottom hinge. And that's where the word tilt comes in because it allows you to slightly tilt the window into the room. And as somebody who grew up with tilt and turn windows, I can tell you that they're versatile, well sealed for insulation, and when tilted, make it harder for thieves to break in. You should have seen his face. That said, for fans of sleek window frames, look away now. Because tilt and turn windows have such a complex opening mechanism, they require thicker frames, which is something that I can relate to. All in all, I've experienced an array of European windows, as well as the double hung sash windows favoured in America. And I have to say, I don't really have a preference, they both get the job done. But one window style that I have come to miss since moving to the United States is the roof window. What is a roof window, Lawrence? Well, you'll be surprised to hear that a roof window is a window on the roof. And a surprising number of British houses have them, whereas they're not as popular in the United States, largely because Americans watch the stars by laying on their roof, which is something that I learned from 80s films. Wait, I've just real Americans don't really do that. I was lied to. Finally, I have heard that you shouldn't leave open your roof window during a rainstorm, unless you want a hole in the floor, which, you know, did make it quicker to get to the kitchen. That's curtains for this episode. Let me know in the comments below some of your favourite window styles. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at LostInThePondUS. And do not forget to hit subscribe because I'm agonisingly close to 300,000. A greenhouse size shout out to my patrons who make these videos as possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.